Thank you, Terry. Thank you, uh, Regional Chief, for your, uh, for your leadership and for your uh, words of introduction and wisdom. Je suis heureux de me joindre à vous aujourd'hui depuis le territoire traditionnel non cédé de la nation algonquine Anishinaabe que nous reconnaissons comme gardiens passés, présents et futurs de cette terre. Elders, youth, veterans, National Chief Archibald, members of the AFN Executive Committee and Chiefs in Assembly, thank you for the opportunity and the invitation to be here with you today. But before I get, begin, I want to offer my condolences to the family and loved ones of Elder Dave Cochin, as well as his entire community of Saguin First Nation. Here at home and around the world, Elder Cochin was admired for his work, his teachings, and his message of peace and hope. He was a remarkable leader, and he will be missed. C'est un honneur pour moi de participer à cette assemblée avec vous. Pour beaucoup d'entre vous et pour vos communautés, Je sais que cette année a été difficile. La découverte de sépultures anonymes d'enfants décédés dans le système de pensionnat a rouvert des blessures profondes. Ces découvertes ont rendu la douleur encore plus vive pour les survivants, les familles et l'ensemble des peuples et communautés autochtones. Et elles ont réaffirmé une vérité que vous connaissiez depuis longtemps. Over the past few years, including when I visited the Kamloops Teskwatmak in October, many people have shared their stories with me. I am listening. I'm listening to what we, as a government, must do to support you. And I can tell you that Canadians are listening too. In fact, not only are they listening, they're calling for more action faster. And that's exactly what we're ready to deliver. We know that continuing to move forward on the path of reconciliation cannot come without truth. That's why we're appointing a special interlocutor to further advance justice on residential schools while ensuring that communities undertaken burial searches have what they need. The children who never returned home must not be forgotten. As a country, we must all continue hearing the truth of what happened to them and to their communities. I know that the trip to meet with the Pope at the Vatican has been postponed, but I want to take this opportunity to wish the First Nations delegation a successful visit when it'll be safe to travel, which hopefully will be very soon. To move forward, we must recognize our past. The residential school system is not the only terrible wrong in Canada's history, so just like we did with the exoneration for Chief Poundmaker and for the Tsokotan chiefs, we'll continue to recognize that truth. Continuer d'avancer sur le chemin de la réconciliation va toujours être une priorité pour notre gouvernement. Depuis 2015, on a fait beaucoup de progrès et on sait qu'il y a encore beaucoup de travail à faire. C'est d'ailleurs le thème central de l'Assemblée extraordinaire des chefs cette année, De bâtir l'avenir. This is our moment to build a better future together. This is the moment to ask ourselves, how can we continue breaking down barriers? What can we do to accelerate our work? How can we build on the progress we've already made? Part of that answer, I believe, is to continue collaborating as partners, nation to nation. D'abord, on continue d'être là pour vous fournir tout l'aide dont vous avez besoin pour lutter contre la COVID-19 et vous rétablir de ses conséquences. L'émergence d'un nouveau variant dans plusieurs pays à travers le monde, y compris ici au Canada, nous a rappelé que la pandémie n'est pas terminée. Parce que notre gouvernement, pendant que notre gouvernement s'assure d'obtenir des doses de rappel, des doses pour les enfants et des vaccins de prochaine génération contre la COVID-19, on continue de travailler avec les provinces et territoires et avec nos partenaires des Premières Nations pour veiller à ce que tout le monde ait accès au vaccin. La pandémie a mis en évidence et parfois aggravé des écarts sur le plan des soins de santé et on est déterminé à les éliminer. Par exemple, on va faire d'importants investissements dans une stratégie en matière de santé mentale et de mieux-être fondée sur les distinctions qui répondent aux besoins de tous les peuples autochtones, Premières Nations, Inuits et Métis. Making sure 
everyone can get safe and equitable access to the care they need, free from racism or discrimination, will always be a priority for us. That's why we'll keep tackling systemic racism in our institutions, including by fully implementing Joyce's principle. Keeping people healthy is essential to the well-being of communities. Of course, so is keeping people safe. On top of everything else people had to face this year, communities were hit by record heat waves, by wildfires, by floods. Regional Chief TG was talking about that, and I know uh, it's something that is concerning for all Canadians, but particularly impactful in BC. Well, to meet this challenge, we're moving faster than ever to prevent and prepare for extreme weather events, including with the development of Canada's first ever national adaptation strategy, and we'll make sure that this process includes Indigenous peoples' participation and involvement. This is an important work, but I don't have to tell anyone here today that responding to extreme weather is only one part of the equation. We also have to address climate change head on. First Nations know better than anybody that climate change is real. You have long been leaders in environmental stewardship, sustainable development, and management of natural resources. On est déterminé à continuer de travailler en partenariat avec vous afin de lutter contre les changements climatiques et la perte de biodiversité. Des initiatives comme le programme des aires protégées et de conservation autochtone sont des exemples essentiels de la voie que le Canada doit emprunter pour protéger la nature et avancer vers la réconciliation. When we talk about building a better future for our kids, it can sound abstract, I, I get that. But the progress we've made together is real. The results we've delivered have a real positive impact on real people's lives. Just take clean, clean drinking water, for example. We've lifted 120 long-term drinking water advisories and the work will continue until all remaining advisories have been lifted. But what does that actually mean? Well, in Shoal Lake 40, it means that people now have clean drinking water after 24 years of advisories. I remember one of the very first trips to an Indigenous community I made after getting elected in 2015 was to Shoal Lake 40. I got to meet with the community, with leaders, with kids. I got to stand at the beginning, at the end, depending on your perspective, of Freedom Road that was as yet unbuilt. And I made a commitment that we would keep working with you until we got there, until we finished that road, until we ended the boil water, drinking water advisories. And we did. Well, after waiting for decades, Chief Red Sky said, it was about time. I agree. And I agree that it's unacceptable that some communities are still waiting. So I can assure you that everywhere there's a long-term drinking water advisory left, there's a project team and an action plan in place to resolve it. L'eau potable, c'est essentiel pour les individus, mais aussi pour les communautés. À Shoal Lake 40, au cours des années, le manque d'accès à eau potable a poussé plusieurs personnes à déménager. Maintenant, certains considèrent d'y revenir et de reconnecter avec l'endroit où ils ont grandi. C'est du vrai changement pour les familles et leurs enfants. Il n'y a rien de plus important que d'offrir aux enfants le meilleur départ possible dans la vie. Les enfants autochtones méritent de grandir avec leurs proches dans leur communauté et dans leur culture. This summer, with Chief Delorme Cadmus of the Cowessess First Nation, as well as the government of Saskatchewan, we signed the first ever coordination agreement under the Act Respecting First Nations, Inuit and Métis Children, Youth and Families, Bill C-92, that we work to co-develop together. But the work doesn't stop in Cowessess. We know that reforming the system will require significant commitments and investments by the federal government, and we're prepared to make them. We're also prepared to provide fair and equitable compensation to those harmed by discrimination in that system. Of course, making sure children have the best possible start in life also means 
making sure they can learn in good schools. Since 2016, we've invested in 196 school infrastructure projects for First Nations communities. One of these projects is a new K-12 school for Muslim First Nation. And the great news is that that construction is planned for this coming year, 2022. Cette nouvelle école pour la Première Nation Moussoumine va offrir un grand gymnase, un centre de ressources d'apprentissage culturel, une bibliothèque, plusieurs laboratoires et un bureau d'infirmière. Mais le plus important, c'est que cette nouvelle école va aider les enfants à atteindre leur plein potentiel. Que ce soit pour bâtir des écoles, éliminer les écarts d'infrastructures, investir dans le logement ou protéger et promouvoir les langues et les cultures des Premières Nations, on est là pour travailler avec vous. I've covered a lot of ground so far from clean water to climate change, but we know that all that really is just the start. Because in all of our work, our government is committed to going even faster and further. Faster on our work to address the national tragedy of missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, and 2S LGBTQ QIA plus people. Faster on implementing the calls to action and the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, on the resolution of outstanding land claims, on economic empowerment, faster on advancing self-determination, and further on the shared path of reconciliation. As our Governor General Mary Simon has said, there is hope in the everyday. Reconciliation is not a single act, nor does it have an end date. It is a lifelong journey of healing, respect, and understanding. And I am ready to keep walking that lifelong journey with all of you. Miigwech, kinenasko mutanao, masicho, gelakasla, merci. Thank you, my friends. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that presentation, uh, Mr. Prime Minister. At this point, uh, Chiefs Delegates, we have just under 20 minutes uh, to take some questions. What I will do is I will look to the raised hands and I would like to try and spread it out as much as possible across the country and uh, try and spread it out as much as we can. Also, uh, just a reminder, we do have the chat box. Chiefs, if we don't get to everybody, if you can please uh, state your question or your comments in the chat box and we will have that forwarded. What I'll do is I'll take up to three questions and then I will give it to the Prime Minister to respond and then I will come back and take up to three more. So with that, I would like to recognize uh, Chief Patrick Mitchell. If I can have uh, Patrick, Chief uh, Mitchell unmuted, please. Go ahead, Chief Mitchell. Cook Jem, thank you, mercy. Uh, Prime Minister, thank you so much for sharing today. Uh, I'm from Lytton, BC, and I, I put a couple of things up and shared with uh, Ministers Haju, Miller, and Lametti. And of those things, there are four projects that my community is prepared to roll out in support of the entire region. The impacts of the Lytton fire and the November 15th atmospheric river doesn't just impact Indigenous people. It's impacting the hearts and the minds and the souls and the spirit of all Canadians. So I'm encouraging you to reach out with your staff to discuss those projects. Because in 1910, when my great great grandfather wrote to Sir Wilfrid Laurier, he wrote to Ottawa and said, there's going to be a time of reckoning if we continue to use the land and resources as we're doing. That was restated in 1967 in the Lament for Confederation by Chief Dan George. So when we look on November 25th, I did a video called the Climate Change Wolves, where it talks about these extreme weather events that you're aware of. We heat, wind, rain and cold. My community is currently experiencing two extreme weather events and the repercussions and catastrophes at the same time. I've seen news of extreme wind events in Alberta blowing semis. I know from in the past that extreme cold events have hit Canadians. And so I wanted to thank you again for this opportunity, but most importantly, I just wanted to bring to your attention a product that I've been able to locate subsequent to June 30th, it's called AAC, that we are hosting an event here at Lytton that will see this product brought to Canada, but we're gonna need your help getting the product here because it doesn't exist in Canada. 
and it benefits all Canadians to have a pro see a product that is affordable, that is fire resistant, that is cold resistant, that is wind resistant, and it is water resistant. We just need to bring it to Canada. And if this product is all it's cracked up to be, we can start manufacturing it in BC and Alberta and in Saskatchewan and Manitoba and Ontario so that we have the homes and buildings that can withstand the extreme weather events. So thank you again, sir, just for this opportunity to, to listen to my words. I don't have a direct question, just asking you to take the time to speak with your ministers about what Kanakabar has proposed. Thank you again. Merci. Miigwech, uh, Chief Mitchell. I'd like to turn it over to Chief uh, Ralph Leon. If I can have Chief Leon unmuted, please. There we go. Chief Leon, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Prime Minister, for taking the time for for our, us chiefs. Um, but I also want to recognize that, um, you know, the, the step forward that you helped, helped us take with uh, meeting with the Vatican, the Pope, because we need next steps that are available to all of our people in healing. And we need to take that together along with yourself, with the local provinces, with uh, with our all of our people. All of our survivors are important and also their, their children. The ancestors are important. And uh, thank you for, for coming to BC to the, the Shushwap, the Shwapnik territory and recognizing all of our people because those ancestors are from all over BC and um, our people have went to that school and thanking you for, for coming there and recognizing the, the local chiefs there. And um, climate change is, is real. Thank you for recognizing that. And the local governments, federal governments, need to also recognize the local governments, the chief and councils, and, um, you know, working with them the best they can to to fix certain things. As um, in our um, Fraser Valley here, the, the Sumas Nation has uh, gone through a holy man, you know, the flooding that has happened here. Um, the local governments, provincial governments, federal governments need to recognize and work with us as well. And um, fixing, preventing all these things that need to be put in place, policy procedures and fixing and, you know, the preventative work that needs to take place and it needs to start today. So with that, thank you, Terry TG and, um, the chairs and um, I also wanted to touch a little bit on the day school. We have day school here in Stalus and um, we need uh, to meet with the federal governments on our day school and our plans, ACF. Thank you, Chair. Miigwech, uh, Chief Leon. Again, I didn't hear a direct question, but very important comments directed to the Prime Minister. Uh, Chief Peter Collins. Can I have uh, Chief Collins unmuted, please? There we go. Uh, Chief Collins, go ahead. Good, af good afternoon, uh, Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, it's nice to see you uh, again uh, quite some time since I've seen you uh, online. But nonetheless, uh, I asked you a question about a year ago. We have a project called uh, a long-term care project we've been working on for quite some time here in Fort William. I asked you this question a year ago to help your government. Uh, our project is in the hands of your government. And you said you would have Minister Miller and Minister Bennett you know, really get this project off the ground. Uh, today, nothing has happened. Now I've been working with your newly appointed infrastructure minister, Minister LaBlaw. Again, uh, it's an opportunity to create jobs great jobs in our community, great jobs in uh, Northwestern Ontario in its entirety. And it's a project that's been uh, a shovel-ready project that you talk highly about creating all jobs and opportunity in Canada. Well, we want to be a part of that creation. Will you uh, direct your minister to help get our project off the ground? Thank you very much, Chief uh, Collins. 
Thank you very much, uh, Miigwech, for that comment. I will take one more. Uh, we didn't have a lot of specific direct questions, so I will take one more before I turn it over to uh, the Prime Minister. Uh, Chief Tom, uh, can I please have uh, Chief Nicole Tom uh, unmuted, please? And I'm just looking uh, throughout my uh, various boxes here. Uh, Chief Tom, uh, there, we, there we go. Chief Tom, please go ahead. Good, after, good afternoon, um, Prime Minister. Uh, my question for you is, will you be championing, championing um, protecting the Yukon River salmon through um, negotiating with the United States and um, the waterways in the ocean and helping us to mitigate the situation which is happening for the salmon? Uh, that is all. Thank you, Missy. Miigwech. Thank you very much, uh, Chief Tom. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Prime Minister Trudeau. Thank you. A lot of great, uh, great comments and questions. I really appreciate it. Uh, just to, as a blanket statement, uh, you know, my team is taking note of all these questions, and we will make sure uh, that uh, ministers follow up directly on on the issues brought forward. Uh, and I will follow up to make sure that that indeed happens. Uh, but I do want to. I can address uh, uh, some of those uh, issues. First of all, Chief Mitchell, uh, you know what happened in Lytton was both heartbreaking uh, and also a warning for uh, the reality we're going to face in the future. And it's going to be really, really important that we work together, not just uh, to rebuild uh, for Indigenous people and for uh, non-Indigenous people, but for uh, everyone together in, in a collaborative way. And I think you've uh, you made that very, very clear that we need to need to do that. We're always looking for new solutions, new ways of looking at it. So I'm uh, interested in, in seeing my ministers get, uh, get to know a little more about this product you're talking about. Uh, and the solutions we can have because we need to build back we need to build back better we need to understand that climate change means uh, more and greater impacts from extreme weather events uh, things that were built a certain way you know decades ago can no longer be built that way uh, for a resilient future uh, that's going to take money uh, and investment and hard work but it's also going to take uh, innovation and creativity and quite frankly the uh, understanding and the traditional knowledge and the fact that you've been uh, as Indigenous people, stewards of this land for, for eons uh, means that there is a lot we can learn from you uh, on, on what happens when, uh, when weather goes extreme, because over that time scale, uh, we've seen a lot of this before. Um, Chief Leon, thank you for bringing up the issue of uh, the papal visit and indeed the, the apology. Uh, I, was, uh, I was very sorry to see, uh, but totally understand uh, why uh, the visit was, uh, was pushed off because the safety and well-being of our elders is the most important thing. Uh, but we need to make sure we are continuing uh, to walk through that path and bring the Catholic Church along. Uh, we really hope to see uh, a papal visit. Uh, and a fulsome apology. It's what I asked for when I met with uh, His Holiness uh, back in 2017. It's what people have been very, very clear is necessary uh, from, uh, from the church uh, in, in the near future. And, and hopefully uh, the voices of the elders and the youth uh, is going to make enough of an impact to ensure that the, uh, uh, the Council of Bishops and, and indeed uh, the Catholic Church in general uh, responds uh, to help people heal the way they need to. On climate change, um, we've seen over the past few years, as we've had, I mean, I remember uh, the, the uh, wildfires around Williams Lake a few years ago, where we really saw a um, level of, of miscoordination uh, and, and even in some cases, uh, lack of respect for Indigenous leadership and knowledge when it comes to protecting your communities as you have for millennia uh, from forest fires. Uh, and from that moment onward over the past few years, we've been working closely with the government of BC and with municipal governments to make sure that uh, on response to extreme weather events, Indigenous leadership and knowledge is folded into the process and not sort of 
added on at the end as sort of a, an extra, because that's a uh, key to actually responding properly in a way that uh, recognizes and values your role as stewards of this land for a time immemorial. Uh, Chief Collins, I I'm sorry uh, that you feel there hasn't been a proper uh, follow-up on that long-term care project. Uh, I will make sure uh, that people follow up with you closer. We are always uh, looking for projects that we can do together, both to create jobs, but to create solutions. Uh, we have very ambitious plans uh, on investing in infrastructure across the country. I know there are uh, lots of projects that come forward. Uh, we try to make sure we're prioritizing the ones that are uh, are, are ready to go. And as you say, yours uh, is uh, shovel ready. Uh, there should be reasons we can move forward. So I'll make sure that we follow up uh, with you on, on that. Uh, and we'll find out why, uh, why it didn't move uh, after we talked uh, last year as well. Uh, and Chief Tom, um, I, I have had uh, many, many conversations uh, about, uh, with uh, uh, Indigenous peoples, with uh, leaders of, of government, uh, including uh, the President of the United States on the importance of salmon uh, to people on the West Coast. Uh, I will make sure that uh, our U.S. Ambassador and uh, others are, are following up on the issue of the Yukon River salmon uh, and uh, how important it is to solve some of the issues there. Uh, it's something that obviously on the oceans is uh, shared jurisdiction uh, uh, around the border areas with Canada and the US, and we need to make sure we're supporting salmon stocks uh, and, uh, and these uh, extraordinary uh, resources to uh, into the future. Miigwech, uh, Prime Minister. Uh, again, I'll turn to a few more. We don't have a lot of time. Uh, Proxy Regina Crowchild. If I can have Proxy Crowchild unmuted, please. Uh, technical staff, if I can have uh, Proxy Regina Crowchild. There we go. Uh, Proxy Crowchild, if you can introduce yourself. Go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Prime Minister. This is Re uh, My name is Regina Crowchild. I'm Proxy for Chief Whitney of Sodina Nation. I can't see the Prime Minister's face. Anyway, um, the last time I spoke to you was when you came to our nation in Mar on March the 5th, I believe, 2016. At that time, I presented you with a treaty medal, Treaty Number 7, to remind you that Treaty 7 is an international treaty with the Crown. And at that point, I did ask you, on behalf of our nation, that anything dealing with our inherent rights, our treaty, and our, the promises of treaty, which we refer to as treaty rights, that, uh, that needs to be addressed with your government, because we have a political government, government to government relationship with the state of Canada, that you directly come to the treaty chiefs to address those things. We have never given our consent to an organization who was not party to treaty making to address these issues on our behalf. And again, and to remind, and just to let you know, recently in, during, in November, our chief and council sent in a resolution reminding AFN that they, they don't have this authority. So, and I know many things have developed since you got into office and you spoke about the most important thing is the relationship with the indigenous peoples well we are still waiting we are still waiting although there's been moments from your previous ministers where they come in talk to us in groups for a couple of hours and off they go They've never sat down and really addressed those issues, nor have you ever sat down and addressed those issues with us on a government to government basis. And so my question is, when is this going to happen? You want true reconciliation, then this has to happen. You've got, and you said we got, you got, that Canada has done a lot of wrongs, you've got to face the truth. Well, the truth is, Canada tried to get rid of us, and they still do today, you know, to assimilate us into the dominant society. And by taking away our jurisdiction and Canada assuming that jurisdiction 
over all matters that pertain to our peoples and our lands. And our governance structures, our lawmaking authority. We have that already. So we're not in a position to try and negotiate that with the state of Canada, who is not party to this treaty. So, and we're waiting and hoping that you keep to your word so that if you're going to address any issues like education, health, uh, in, uh, uh, justice, infrastructure, those that relate to us, that your government will sit down with our government so they can address the issues on a face-to-face -face basis. Because Sojourner Nation is the only one that can, can speak to those rights. And Canada being given the responsibility to look after the promises of treaty, then your government has that responsibility. The other day when the Justice Minister came, he said something about when Canada, when we deconstruct, or we will always have, we will have a fiduciary obligation on Till we deconstruct the colonialism, and that's in and out. So does that mean the promise of treaty that there will always be Indians and lands reserved for Indians, meaning the treaty Indians, that that fiduciary obligation that that the Crown promised our peoples, which they passed on to Canada, is going to be forgotten? Do you want us to be? municipalities and forget about our treaties those are key questions that we need to be that needs to be addressed by your government because you still have a fiduciary obligation for that there'll always be indians and lands reserved for indians as long as the sunshine the grass grows and the rivers flow and they're all still here so there's no end to it thank you Thank you very much, uh, Proxy Crowchild, for uh, that uh, comment and uh, question. At this point, uh, again, uh, time is limited, but I'm going to uh, turn it over to, where am I going? Chief Doris Bill. If I can have, uh, please, uh, Chief Doris Bill unmuted. Technical staff, I'm looking uh, to Chief Doris Bill to be unmuted, please. And just as soon as we have that, there we go. Chief Bill, go Hi. ahead. Hi there. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, and thank you for taking questions from us today. I hope you are well, and I hope your family as well as is well as well. Um, I just um, I, I just want to um, relay some concerns that I have with to you and and uh, enlist uh, the help of the federal government if we can. In the Yukon, we have now surpassed the rest of the country in the number of opioid-related deaths on a per capita basis. We need the federal government to play a larger role here. We need to provide. Uh, um, we need the federal government to provide more resources in areas of prevention, mental health, and housing. We need government to move with the same urgency as we did with the COVID, uh, the COVID situation. We're facing multiple crises in the Yukon. Uh, you know, we, we've got the, um, the opioid situation. We have the COVID situation. We haven't even dealt with the residential, the recovery of our children from uh, the graves across the country. Um, we have a housing crisis that is amplifying the problems that we have in the Yukon. Um, I'm pleading with you, Mr. Prime, and Prime Minister, to to help us, to help us, um, you know, to prevent more people from dying. And, um, you know, the, the, all of these crises put together have had a tremendous effect on our people. The mental health situation in the Yukon and, and I know across the country is taking its toll on our people. And we need you to, to, um, to come and talk to us and to pay attention to this situation, um, we, we need help. And I, I can't underscore the urgency of the situation enough to you. Thank you. Miigwech. Thank you very much, uh, Chief Doris Bill. I will take one more, and I will take one more from uh, the Manitoba Caucus Room. Now, I just want to note, I do see a lineup 
at the microphone. I can only take one more and then we will have to unmute and get the response from the Prime Minister. So I will take one uh, from the Manitoba caucus and if you can please introduce yourself. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Prime Minister, Councillor Daryl Shorting, Headman from uh, Treaty 2 Territory here in Manitoba. Uh, quick question to you. The, can the Canadian government said their apologies to our people, however, not in a meaningful way. Meaningful consultations need to take place in Manitoba. We need you to visit our communities in Manitoba. Your deputies are not doing their jobs. Their duty to consult is not happening. We uh, have had loss of life from the 2011 flood issues that we had in the interlake. We, uh, we also lost uh, additions to lands, farmlands, and also uh, proper compensation for these lands. The non-Aboriginal communities in, our commu in, uh, in, the, in the province of Manitoba were compensated two years after the 2011 flood. And here we're still talking about these issues in 2021, 10 years later, after the fact where we're still, our communities and our families are still doing without proper housing. Mr. Prime Minister, hear us out here in Manitoba. Come and visit us. We matter too. And you know, we had a lot of, a lot of uh, what happened to us in Manitoba is a travesty. And it's falling on deaf ears. Your deputies are not doing their uh, duties. Help us out. We went to Ottawa to visit uh, your uh, deputies. And at that meeting, we had our delegations. No, nobody showed up. The deputies didn't show up. That's how disrespectful they are. Even coming to uh, our community to say that uh, the lake of Lake St. Martin is a reservoir. We were uh, raised and brought up alongside the lakes of uh, Lake St. Martin. And that lake was made by a meteorite millions of years ago. It's not a reservoir and bring Manitoba Hydro to the table. We need to talk to them too. And we need more additions to reserves. Thank you. Miigwech, thank you very much. Uh, the delegation from Manitoba, which I will have muted at this point. That was a uh, very important question. So at this point, I will turn it over to Prime Minister Trudeau to please respond uh, to the various questions. Uh, Prime Minister. Thank you very much. Uh, I know we don't have a huge amount of time, so I'll try and, and cover it. First of all, uh, Proxy Cho uh, Crowchild, uh, Regina, thank you very much uh, for your extremely uh, thoughtful question. I remember well that visit to Tutsina, and I was uh, honored to be given the name Jumisti, as he who tries, he who tries hard. Uh, and uh, that is certainly a name I hope I have lived up to over, over the past years, because we have done a lot of work, but there is much more to do. You share one of the big challenges that we, we are facing that we have to solve together, uh, which is how to move through and beyond the colonial constructs of uh, the Indian Act in a way uh, that responds to the spirit and intent of the treaties and actually empowers you uh, to be in control of your communities, of your resources, of your future uh, in a way that isn't uh, dependent on uh, a colonial relationship uh, to the federal government. Uh, that is something that uh, is a journey that all communities are on in one way or, or other. There are many who have reached full self-government status across the country, others who have taken significant steps towards it. And it is not for the federal government to tell you or anyone um, what the next step is for you uh, or uh, what the ultimate end goal should be for your community. That is for you uh, to determine and for us uh, to work with you to deliver. Uh, in some cases, it's a project of a few years. In some cases, it might be the project of a few decades. Um, but it will be at your pace uh, and alongside your priorities. That is the commitment we've made. Obviously, uh, it is something that uh, our ministers are tasked with, our government is tasked with. Uh, there are many, many different communities with very different requirements that we are working on. Uh, but there are limits to the amount of speed and pace that we can do it. But my commitment to you is that we will uh, work with you on the journey uh, that Sutina Nation wants to take towards self-government, uh, towards control of your own future, 
Uh, that is what the path of reconciliation leads to that we are all on, a place of partnership, a place of respect, a, a place of, of self-government, nation-to-nation relationships. And uh, I continue to be as committed to that path today as I was uh, on the day I visited you uh, and as I was on the very first day I became Prime Minister. Uh, Chief Bill, thank you for your extraordinarily heartbreaking words. I know how much the opioid epidemic has hit hard uh, all across the country, particularly uh, in Indigenous communities. And layer on the uh, challenges of the past years, whether it was uh, COVID uh, or various other challenges, uh, I know it's been extraordinarily difficult. Um, as you lay out their issues around prevention, their issues around mental health, their issues around housing, their issues around economic opportunity and education, their issues of intergenerational trauma, there are layers and layers of complexity uh, in defining the problem uh, that has its articulation in uh, opioid overdoses and epidemics. Um, that we need to work on altogether. That's one of the reasons why uh, the uh, government has named a minister uh, for mental health and addictions. Uh, Carolyn Bennett, who is well known to so many of you uh, for her leadership and her compassion, uh, is uh, taking very, very seriously this responsibility. And we will work uh, in a way with all of you, hand in hand with uh, provincial and territorial leaders in your case, uh, on trying to address this issue. Uh, and try to find those solutions that isn't any one silver bullet, but has many different uh, paths uh, of healing and solutions that we have to work on together. And my heart breaks for you and your community and so many families across the country that have faced terrible losses uh, due to uh, to the opioid epidemic and to the, uh, the addictions that surround it. Uh, and finally, Councillor uh, Darrell, um, I hear you. Uh, I know how uh, governments past, both federal and uh, provincial, particularly uh, over the past number of years, uh, have not been there for you. Uh, and uh, I commit yet again uh, to engage, uh, to listen, uh, to ensure that the federal government is uh, pushing on uh, provincial counterparts. I mean, as we move forward on the on the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, uh, you know, many governments have, uh, provincial governments have not wanted to do that. Uh, as we've taken serious steps on reconciliation around child and family services, provincial governments sort of sit back and say, it's all the federal government's responsibility. Uh, the federal government has a tremendous amount of responsibility as well, but we also share uh, jurisdiction and responsibility in many areas with provincial governments. My commitment to you uh, is to work with the new government of Manitoba uh, to make sure that your concerns are here heard uh, and that uh, uh, we look to find uh, equitable solutions for you. I can hear your impatience and your frustration. Uh, after 10 years, I don't even know if it counts as in being impatient. Uh, you've been very, very patient for a decade. Uh, we need to move forward and we will do so in the right way in partnership with you. Thank you very much, uh, Prime Minister. And uh, again, we are uh, out of time. We really appreciate uh, the time that you've spent. So on behalf of the Assembly, National Chief, uh, Regional Chiefs, uh, Grand Chiefs, Chiefs and Proxies, miigwech. Thank you very much for joining us here today.